Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. This is my first in the series. Well, it, it probably will end up being second or third in the series because this is going to take a while for me to make. But it's going to be my first, second, or third, whatever, in a series called Making Old Things New Again. And it's a really cool concept, I think. My girlfriend's getting married, and her theme is denim and lace. And if you watch my videos, you saw the video that I did where I made her a card for getting married. And I got this stack of paper from Die Cuts with a View that's upside down. I apologize. It's called denim stack. It's the only denim pad I could find anywhere and I'm not really thrilled with it because it's got like a shiny look to it. But anyway, uh, that's the paper I'm going to be working with. And here's the thing I'm going to take that's old and make it new again. It's a really unusual piece. I've never seen anything like it. It has this little box and then the inside of it has this three ring binder and it's an expense journal for a year. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the expense envelopes and make them um, something that's a pocket and also uh, something that we can put a photograph on the front of and then in between I'm going to layer other pieces so that it's uh, an album for her wedding and so I'm not going to start with this first what I thought I would start doing first would be work on some of my embellishments that I'm going to be making and I have some seam binding in here and I have some Tim Holtz Distress uh, ink Reinker for faded jeans. Typical faded jeans, you love that. And I thought what I would do is uh, take some of it and put it in this little cup and then we'll put it in the bag with some water and make it into a die for our seam binding. I don't think it'll take a lot of this reinker because it's pretty strong. And I'm going to be using just some regular water uh, in my spray bottle, and I'm going to dilute it a little bit, or a lot. I'm not exactly certain how much it's going to take for in this bag, and I hope my bag lives to tell the, tell the tale because I'm not sure if, if it's really a good bag or not, but we'll wait and see, right? We'll know in just a second. I could just put the seam binding, maybe I'll just do that, put the seam binding in here first and then put the whole thing into uh, the bag after I got it dunked in here so that I'm sure that it's soaking it up. I could make it like a tie-dye look too. I'm not exactly certain what, where I want to go with my, um, with, with my seam binding. I just wanted to kind of make it look cool and vintage and go with the theme. Obviously there's not enough in there. I'll just leave it in there. I'll put some more. I'm going to wet the whole binding. I think I'll just squirt the till it's all wet. hope I'm in camera. Yes, I know my hands are going to get filthy and I probably could have used um, gloves, but I'm not a glove girl. I like to get dirty. I'm going to just put that on a napkin and put the reinker in the bottom again. And then I'm going to put more water in there. And then put the seam binding in again upside down because the really blue stuff is on top. What I wanted to do is kind of get my get my uh, project started. And I have this really pretty flower. And I thought this is what I would do with it is not make the whole thing blue, but um, just kind of hit the edges with the blue and the bottom so that it matches our theme, but isn't overwhelmingly blue. Well, look how pretty my hands are. Aren't they pretty? And then I had this other flower. I wasn't sure about this. It, it's a um, pin and it's got feathers on it and I don't like the pearl in the middle but I thought I could work with it so that's my plan with that is just kinda just um, see if I can make it viable and if I can't then I can't but in the meantime we'll give it a whirl with our seam binding slash dyed piece of nothing right now Okay, that's that. And then I have some really pretty ribbon that I want to do that to. It's got um, flowers 
the whole oh, it's, apparently it's attached there it is it's really lovely and I'll show it to you I'm just going to cut off a little length of it this is it and it's just gorgeous and I want to do the same thing where I just kind of dab blue along the edges of it so that it's kind of blue but not all blue Maybe I should do more of those because it's really pretty. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do on the outside of the box. I thought these jeans were really cute. So I'm just going to, I already put uh, some tear tape on the back. And I'm going to put a little bit of um, Beacon's Fabri-Tac on here too because what I'm, what I'm laying it on is fabric. So I want to make sure I cover all my bases. You know, I don't want this stuff to come off. I want this to be a permanent plan, and I'm using my pokey tool to hopefully pull these up. It does work a lot better than my fingers, and you know how I get attached to things. Okay, and this is Fabri-Tac. I'm just going to put it. If you, if um, I've said this before in other videos, but if you use tear tape and uh, some wet glue with it it does make it so that you have a little bit it doesn't adhere like instantly it gives you a little bit of time to play with it before it it adheres so that's one of the reasons I do it in addition to the fact that I want to make sure it stays on there and if you've never used Fabri-Tac it's a lot like hot glue in that it does the strings and it kind of runs the only benefit but the only thing that, yeah, the only thing that's a big benefit is you don't have the the um, problem with it being um, hot and burning yourself. So I'm going to lay this gently. Get my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Hopefully centered. I don't love it there. Let's see how I done that edge close enough. I'm going to do more <clears throat> in the way of decorating on the box too, but I, or I might not, I don't know. The box, I want just to kind of be the thing that protects the the project. I don't want it to necessarily be where the decorations are. I thought this was cute on the edge. This is one piece of paper from the set attached to another piece of paper from the set. So it's um, layered. I didn't think you needed to watch me do that because it's, you know, pretty simple. I know you're probably going, well, this is simple, too. Okay, a little bit of glue. Get it off my hand. That's the other benefit of having a little wet glue. It gets it off my hands a little bit easier. Okay. Okay. This piece doesn't matter which way uh, up or down because it's the same pattern I think either way okay and back I don't know if I'll make you watch the bottom and top because uh, well, I'll just do I'll just do one of those pieces and then you won't have to watch me do the back because you've already seen me do the front, and I don't want you to have to go through all this. It's too painful to watch all this. Of course, I didn't get the end. Okay. You have to, <coughs> excuse me, when you're doing this kind of project, you always have to watch your pattern to see that if it if it has an up and down to it. And when you're looking at jeans, it doesn't seem like it has a pattern, but it does because the material has a grain and the grain, um, you know, when you look at your your pants, you, you see the, gr the grain. And that's why you have to make sure that when you're doing a project like this, it's a little bit too high. Um, you want to make sure that your pants grain is exactly the way you'd want them to be. And it's a little bit low, but I can live with that. Okay, 
then I'll just do the rest of it and then we'll be back. Okay. Well, I forgot what I was doing and didn't even remember to record this when I was I'm trying to get, keep my head out of the way, but I'm also trying to make sure that I get this centered. I guess that looks kind of right. I'm going to be putting more stuff on the edges too to make sure that it looks better. And then I have a piece that needs to go on the back. That's right here. And here's the tricky part about the back. I have this. And i got to pull these other papers out of the inside so I don't forget about them. I have this piece that this flap, this taggy thing. What I thought I would do, I don't know if you can even see what I'm doing. I thought what I would do is kind of just lay it down where it would go. And then thought I would just snip the edge. Whoop! Oh boy. I have to do this. I think it goes in. Let me see. Yeah, it does angle in. Probably should have like figured a way to do that. Make it so it stands see if that works. So far, so good. Where's the edge on this side? Hard to find my flap edge, that's for sure, because it's black and it blends in with my brown. Okay, let me see if I can get those to lay down. And then my goal here is to then cut that pull that piece out. That's my goal anyway. My glue, my, my scissors have so much glue on them and I keep cleaning them during this project and I keep having to re-clean them because this just doesn't work. I think I'm going to get my uh, pokey, my double stick. Here it is. As you know, you got to get your demon stick out and use it for projects like this. Hopefully you can see me doing this on camera. When the blood starts to squirt out, um, you'll know. Hopefully. Do it straight across or as straight across as... Well, close. I'm going to probably put some kind of embellishment around that, so I'm not really super duper concerned about it. So far, so good. Oh, I forgot to show you the front. Um, I think I told you I was all excited about um, gluing it down and I'm going to get chipboard I'm going to put Mr. and Mrs. right there I thought that would be fun and then I'm going to be doing a lot of other things in the front and then there's the back there's this side we're rolling now sometimes when you get a project like this you get something weird and in this case I have this it was a pocket that was on the inside I don't know what it was for but it was kind of yucky and I thought we needed to get rid of it so I ripped it off but it didn't come off cleanly so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put an extra layer of um, paper over that piece that way I'll be sure to uh, not have any kind of issues with seeing that bump because that's the thing I don't want to have happens I don't want you just go like what the heck is that there's some weird bump in there. So that's how you fix a problem like that and then you then you go on to covering it with your other paper. So I decided I'm going to on the front of this album I thought I'd put Mr. and Mrs. and uh, you see the and is there. I don't know if you can see it because that paper shows like reflects back. But anyway I have some chipboard Mr. and Mrs. and I'm going to be using some chip sapphire and kind of go over the letters and the the um oh it's a uh, the stains I didn't know if I said that it's this, it's um ranger distress ink stains and I'm hoping that it will be a nice blue when I'm done I think it will be I think I've used this blue before on the dog album that I did I'll link that dog album um, I like making albums for my friends. They're easier. It's something that's like a keepsake, especially for something big like a wedding or, um, in her case, a new puppy. In the other in the other video that I did, and 
I might just do around the uh, front and the edges of this, but make it so that you can kind of see the cardboard on the sides. So I think I'm going to do it's my plan at this point. And hopefully it'll work good. Hopefully. It worked, like I said, it worked real well when I did the dog. There's that, and here's a little dot. Might as well soak up some of the stain that's on my pad. Because every time I do that, it gets stuck on there. I like these distressed ink stains. They're nice. Easy to work with. Easy to make a big mess on me with, too, as always. I thought I had the the jeans blue, but I don't think it really matters because when you uh, kind of reapply these, they seem to get darker every time you do it. So I'm just going to kind of go over the places I can reach, and if I can't reach it, I'm not going to worry about it. Some of these things are really easy to do, like the, the backs of the letters, but the fronts of the letters where you you know where you have the the spots that you have to get into into little corners on it. It's not as easy. Do the bottoms. The bottoms are easy. Okay. And then I think what I'll do is just let these dry and then we'll come back to them and see. <coughs> excuse me, if they need another coat. One thing you, uh, to note, if you've never done anything with chipboard letters, you have to use a file on them because when you pop them out, you get um, weird little edges. So I had to spend a little bit of time doing that, making sure that they were completely, um, and that there weren't any weird little edges on them. Okay, so I did my Mr. and Mrs. and I made sure I used a um, paintbrush to get around all of the edges so hopefully it's in pretty good shape. And now I'm going to put some satin Mod Podge on it. I'm not sure if my Mod Podge is, is old. It's really, really, really um, runny. So I stirred it as best I could, and I guess we'll wait and see, right? Go with it, and if, it's, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, right? Okay, so now I have got some ribbon that I'm going to put like this on the jeans on the front of the box. I'm going to do it hopefully very, very delicately with my hot glue gun. Hopefully that's the goal anyway. I'm just going to put a little dollop right there and then lay it down on it. And hopefully it'll stay. I'm not going to do too much at a time because I don't want this to do something funky. Okay, so then I took three white buttons and I threaded a piece of the paper through it. And now I'm going to put it, put them right here on, I guess you call those studs that were on the pants. I just didn't think the studs were dressy enough so I thought I'll just dress them up a little bit by putting a button there. And hopefully they'll look cute when I'm done. Or they won't and you will all go, oh what was she thinking? Was she thinking anything when she did that stupid thing? That's what I'm shooting for not to have happen. 
I'm hoping everybody goes, oh, that was a good idea. Cute idea, Sandy. In case you're thinking, ugh, now's the time. Oh, that's right. You can't tell me now's the time. Oh, boy. Okay. So that's my bottom line. That's, I don't know if I should move that one up a little bit. I think I'm gonna. Nobody will ever notice that. Okay. I got a couple of hairs in there, but that's okay. I'll use a, my um, dryer on them and get those little hairs off when I'm done. On to the next plan. Okay. So my Mr. and my Mrs. are all dried. And I think I'm going to try hot glue. Wish me luck, because you know it always makes me want to cry when I do this, because I always get hurt. Even though I have the little... The little um, finger uh, finger thing. You know, I always put it on the wrong finger and end up in a world of pain. Let's see if we can get this one on exactly where we want it. Okay. I have no idea why I have them on those fingers. Aren't the fingers I'm using, but you know, I always have to have it on the wrong finger. So I. I just have those rubber things on a finger, and we'll all just, uh, ouch. We'll all just assume I'm not going to burn myself much. I'm going to burn myself, but not much. That's the plan. That's okay, I think. Now the little dot, you know that's the thing I'm going to really get hurt on. Let's see if I have any way of holding on. I should use tweezers for that. Tweezers, come on, that's a good idea. Genius, whoever thought of that? Wasn't me, probably. Okay, we'll try these. I don't need the thumb thing then. I'm going to hold it like that, because that's how I'm going to end up having it on there. Oh, I've already dropped it. Okay, strings. I'm liking it. Are you liking it? I think it's cute. Okay. Now let's try the tweezers again. See if those work at all. Okay. <sighs> Got a big string. I don't like those strings when they're in the middle like that. Hopefully it'll still work. Loads of string. I know I can get them off later, but it makes me nuts when I'm doing the project. Okay. I think it's looking cute. I'm pretty happy with it so far. So far. Dot. The worst part is doing those little dots. <laughs> The little periods. Always the scary part for me. I'm always pretty sure I'm going to end up wounding myself. And I probably will before this is over. Okay. A little glue everywhere. I don't know if all that glue will come off or not. It's alright. Okay. So what do you think? Cute? I'm happy. Okay, on to the next stage. Okay, I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put this little piece of ribbon on this. Um, this is, I made this as a pocket right here, so I thought I'd put something fun on the outside of the pocket. 
so far that's the plan. Let's just hope it works. Look how I touched it with my finger without the thing on it. Why do I do that? I'm just like so... I'm a rocket scientist, I believe. I got this bunch of ribbon um, at um, Michael's in their dollar fifty rack over the weekend. I found it and I liked how there were a bunch of different whites because you know this I think this will look better if it has a lot of white in it because there's so much navy in it or so much um, denim. And I have these three red buttons that I put some twine that's um, like red and white twine. I thought about putting those on this pocket, but maybe I'll put it on a different pocket. And then I have these white ones that I did the same thing with some, um, that was not, um, it wasn't twine, it was paper. I'm so sorry, I just lost my mind there for a second. Okay. This is cute. Okay, let me go to the beginning and we'll kind of walk through what I've done so far. This first page, let's see if I can, if I have it in, in frame. I'll go, I'm just going to do one, one of these pages at a time, that way you can see it. Then the back of this page looks like that, and it's blue with that weird patch. I might cover that patch. I'm not in love with it yet. Then this side, this is a pocket that I made. So I'm going to put something in that. These two pages I'm going to do just for photographs because I think they're way too fun because of the belt. And then this is just a page of of the, I don't know, what do you call those things that you have in your pants. And then this page I put another pocket in the middle of it and then this is their invitation oops sorry this is the pocket that I made to put a tag in and then this is their invitation then back to that same paper that I have in the front this is uh, another pocket I put these little white brads on I thought that looked kinda cute I'm not sure if I love it or not yet but you never know that's the page I was working on just now with that uh, pocket this is not a pocket. I should have cut that and made it a pocket. I don't know what I was thinking, but I should have done that. It would have looked a lot better if I had. This is another duplicate of those pages with the uh, pants, whatever. These are, this is another pocket. I want to do something more on that page. And then this is um, plain. I want to do something more with that. Then another of these jeans. Then this is... Um, one that I haven't done anything with. And that's just simple. And then this is another another of the pockets that I haven't done anything with. I'm still thinking through these pockets. This is a white pocket that I thought I'd put like maybe in the center of this. I don't know yet. Hope you can see all these. And then the jeans again. And then the very last page. I haven't decided what to do with that pocket yet. So that's where I stand right now with the project. I didn't want you to think that I would skip over anything in the process, but I have to come up with some ideas of how to make these a little bit more frisky, I think. I, I think they just need a little bit of something. Like on this page, oops, sorry, I'm stuck. Every time I have one of these, there's this weird little white thing. I think I need to put a button there or a brad or something to make that look cute. So I have a few of those pages. So that's my thinking right now is I need to do something with that. And then on these uh, pockets, I don't know. I think this needs some lace or something on it. So that's what we're going to be doing. Okay, well, I'm not sure how much of the video I have gotten up to this point that actually made it to the final cut. So I'm just going to go through the album step by step with you. It came in this box. It was um, a ledger that people kept track of expenses in. So I covered the box with all these papers that are from jeans. If you'll remember, my bride's theme is denim and lace. So that's the box that this the album will slide out of. Then this is the album. 
and I'll put it as far over that way as I can so when I open it you can see both sides. I put some chipboard. I colored these with uh, chipped sapphire. Um, it's from, I'll just show it to you. It's a Distress Stain from Tim Holtz and it's chipped sapphire and I just um, took the chipboard and dotted it. Then afterwards I used some Mod Podge that was a satin finish and this came from the paper all came from uh, die cuts with a view it's called denim stack I had to get it through Amazon because it's not anywhere anymore then I'm going to slide it this way so you can see the left page that is their wedding date which is today and it's also in chipboard same system then this side are their initials and I used some uh, the chipboard and then I used some uh, I'm not happy about this so far. I use glossy accents, you know, crystal effects from Stampin' Up, and it's taken forever to dry, and this piece has got a little bit of, I don't know, we'll call it a boo-boo on it. Not happy about that so far, but I'm going to have to worry about that later. Then that's just a page with nothing on it. This is my first page with an envelope, and it has, um, what I did is I took these little Tim Holtz, um, pieces and I took a button Rich cut the back off of the buttons that are hearts and then I stuck the heart on the piece and then this I cut with the top of this tag with a, an ornate tag topper stamp no punch sorry and then I just outlined the the uh, red cardstock with a white gel pen it goes back in and then I used some white brads that I cut the backs off of and just uh, stuck down in there and then this is uh, another one of those chipboard two uh, buttons with I put some red and white twine through it this is a piece of denim ribbon that goes over some uh, it, that's some ribbon that had some glitter in it that I liked then this is a really cool page. This page I made the bottom piece is is a piece that you can tuck things into and so I just cut out these two uh, pockets and did the same thing with the, the little pull tabs and stuck them in there so that they'll pull out if you want them to. Moving this over a little bit this is the wedding invitation and all I did with that is I just stuck a little uh, heart on that piece then the next page I didn't do anything with this side and then this side I just made a pocket and uh, another one of these tabs this page was a problem I used I used brads and I kept the backs on the brads the, that doesn't work I don't recommend that at all the brads raised it too much and I'm gonna have to re-glue it down I can see already before I leave I'm gonna have to do a little fix up on that this page I'll move this over a little bit. This page, I liked the uh, pocket. I put uh, some little flowers on it, and then I cut a piece of the red paper and stuck one of the hearts on it. This is the last name, and there was a weird uh, green, um, like oh, I can't, I can't really think of what you call it. It, it was almost like camo. It wasn't really cool. So it didn't meet, meet my the rest of my project. So I covered it with some fabric and put a little glitter on the fabric. Then put the K on it with some crystal accents. And then I stuck this tag inside that is a, a tag that somebody gave me with the hearts on the top. And then I attached it to a regular tag because it was too delicate. Otherwise it would have torn. I don't know, it's really hard to see. This paper is so shiny. Not That's one thing I don't like about it. It's really shiny paper. This page, I just put a uh, uh, pocket in, a real pocket, and then I just stuck a regular tag inside. And this one has been really hard to get the tag in and out of. This was, uh, the page itself, um, I cut it right where that pocket is and I put this piece of ribbon on it and then I stuck a uh, piece of paper inside and I wish I'd done that to the other one there's two of those in here I wish I'd done it because I really liked it then this one I I used the red and I had these love tickets and so I just attached those to the top 
Then this side, I had I wanted it to be kind of cohesive, so I stuck the love down on that side. This page, I didn't really do much to that. And then this page, I put the little... It's really hard to see. I'm sorry. See, these are little wee teeny tiny pearls, and these are pearls on the belt buckle. Then on this page, it has the red. I thought it broke up the white, and I put a little bit of ribbon, lacy ribbon around the top of the pocket, and I put some pearls on that pocket as well. Then on the right side, I just used the paper and stuck some embellishments that I had that were kind of white and glittery for the centers of the flowers. See, here's the other page I was telling you about. I wish I had cut the top of that one too. I thought it would look cute, but I didn't. I f it was too. I was running out of time. Then this one, I just put little red pearls on the three corners and put the two flowers on it. And then this page, I like the white pocket and I put the buttons on it and then I took white, this is the same paper, and then I just put a piece of red ribbon around the top and the same heart. Then these two pages I didn't do anything to because I, she needs to have some places where she can just do photos. Then this page I attached that same kind of, I don't know if you can see, it's glimmery, um, ribbon and I dyed those at the very beginning. They're little flowers. Then this is a pocket. It's an envelope that I made out of like a jeans material. And I haven't finished it yet. I'm scared to do this. I might just stick it on the back cover. I want to put this somewhere. But anyway, this holds something I thought was kind of a good idea. It's closed. I'm going to open it up. What I did was I took the paper and I lined it. I'll show you some of them. I lined it with tear tape. I didn't take the backs off the tear tape. I just lined the paper. Then I put the paper through my um, photo corner punch. And now all she has to do is take these backs off. And she has all kinds of photo corners to stick in her to stick her photos in and it'll match the rest of her album. I like that idea. Made me happy when I was done with it. Took a little bit of a little bit of time to do it, but made me happy. And that's the album. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you give it a thumbs up and I hope if you haven't subscribed that you you take a chance on me and do subscribe because I really enjoy making these kind of videos and um, love having my friends get presents from me like this. So I hope you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.